Make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all ye land. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. Know ye that the Lord is good. It is he that hath made us, and not we ourselves. Isn't it good to be here this morning? Good morning to all of you. I'm certainly happy that, uh, to have you to come with us on this beautiful Sunday morning to sing songs of Zion and to receive the word of God. Let us continue to pray for all of our sick and shut in this morning. Let us pray this morning for Sister McFarland, one of our members. Yes, that's on our prayer list this morning. Sister Jesus. Ophelia Jones, Brother Alonzo Ransom, uh, Deacon Hammond, Deacon and Mrs. James Cameron, uh, Deacon Charlie Hand this morning, Brother Lagree McCamey, uh, Little Miss Macklin Enfield this morning, Reverend and Mrs. Tucker. Uh, praying this morning for Minister Jalen Gates, Sister Bessie Wright, Sister Amy Davidson, Sister Arizona Edmondson this morning. All of them on our prayer list this morning. Uh, we're praying that God will hear and answer yes. prayer. Also praying for Sister Ether Hall this morning and Sister Kathleen Floyd. Uh, they're still on our prayer list this morning as well. I want you to pray for all of them this morning. As we get ready to go in prayer, you may know someone yourselves this morning that need prayer. If you would, call their names out as we get, get ready to go in prayer. May we pray. O eternal God, our Father, we ask your blessings now upon this congregation. God, we ask your blessings upon those names that you heard called out this morning that are sick. God, we're praying uh, that your grace, your mercy will abide as, as it already have. We're praying this morning that you just be with us. Uh, not only us, God, but be with every church, every pastor, every Sunday school teacher, every minister. We're praying this morning that you would be with every praise team. Yes, Lord. Uh, everyone that's trying to come and bring forth the word this morning. Uh, every every videographer this morning. Each one that's trying to make this thing happen. God, we're praying. We're living in crucial times, critical times. We're living in times that seem as though where the, it seems as though the people have forgotten about the church. God, we're praying this morning that as you have allowed this virus to come through this land, God, we're asking that it will help us to come closer to you. It will help us to be uh, more acknowledging to you and acknowledge you in all things that we do. God, we'll be careful to give the praise, the glory, and the honor. In the name of Jesus, we pray. All the saints of God said, Amen. Yeah. And amen. Amen. God bless you this morning. Yes. Join in with us this morning as we sing one of the old songs of the church. Amen. Why don't you load out chariots?
leads us into more inspirational music.
should be proud of the contributions uh, that each one of our people uh, contributed to make this country what it is. Uh, this United States is what it is because of all people. Yes. Everyone have joined in to make this country to be what it is. Yes, Lord. Uh, it happened uh, by way of the cornfields and cotton fields. Tobacco field. Oh, Jesus. It happened uh, by way of uh, people giving up themselves, yes. helping others, yes. tilling the land, Thank the Lord. Uh, helping those uh, that we need. It happened because we all pulled together. Mm -hmm. In Jim Crow days, we all pulled together and we helped one another out. If there was a family that didn't have anything and you had, you shared what you had. All right. By the grace of God, it brought us all thus far. Mm -hmm. And we're here today by the grace of God. Yeah. None of us have anything that we can brag about right. that we did it all by ourselves. Thank you, Lord. Uh, we can brag about Jesus. Yeah. Lord Jesus. Uh, the Lord Jesus has yeah. uh, made it possible. Thank you, God. But to be where we are today. Yes. 
We're now enjoying the fruit of our labor because of the grace of God. We're enjoying the fruit of the labor that a lot of our foreparents have done. I told people all, tell people all the time that I'm standing on the shoulders of too many people for me to act as though I'm bigger than I am. Everything that I have is because of somebody else. Everything that I've become is because of somebody else. And if you would tell the truth about your own life, everything that you have become is because of someone else. But it's by the grace of God, all of us are here this morning. Uh, this chapter this morning, in chapter 5 this morning, as we look, we've talked about uh, Moses, we've talked about Joshua uh, in these chapters, and we've also talked about different ones who have uh, made the plight of the children of Israel, how they came out of bondage, how they were brought out of Egypt, and how they were led through the wilderness, and how God gave them a land that was flowing with milk and honey. We, we discussed all of that. We also discussed how the children of Israel, each time they got up on their feet, each time God blessed them tremendously, the Bible says they turned from the Lord. But God was gracious to them. God was gracious to them. The Bible said he continued to have grace on them. He had to chastise them. He had to allow different ones to overtake them. But each time they cried out, God heard their cry. And God came to the rescue. Here in chapter 5 this morning, really, it gives you a view of really what happened in chapter 4. In chapter 4, Israel had once again fell back into their evil ways of serving other gods. They had turned from the true and living God once again. They had a leader by the name of Ehud. And when Ehud was living, they were following God. Ehud died. Now he is dead. Ehud was, uh, was the one that saved Israel from Moab. Ehud was the one that saved Israel because uh, they had an evil king by the name of Eglon. Moab had overtaken the children of Israel. Eglon was a king uh, of Moab. The Bible says that Eglon was a stout man. He was a fat man. The Bible says that Ehud was a left-handed man. He was left-handed and he got his dagger. He slipped it in and went into the king's chamber. And while Eglon was there in the chamber, the Bible states that Ehud took his dagger with his left hand and stabbed Eglon in his stomach. Oh, my brothers and sisters, uh, can't you see that uh, incident here? They were being oppressed by this evil king Eglon, being oppressed by him, but Ehud was faithful. Ehud was one that did not want to see the children of Israel suffer under the hands of the king of Moab. Uh, so he settled the cage. Once again, the children are, are now free. They're out of bondage. They're out of oppression. And here it is. Deborah now has become judge. Yes, a woman by the name of Deborah. She has become judge over the children of Israel. But here it is, under her leadership, they have now turned from the Lord. Oh, listen here this morning. They have turned from the Lord and the king of Canaan by the name of Jabin. Jabin had 900 chariots. He had a mighty army. And he had oppressed the children of Israel for 20 years. Had oppressed them for 20 years. Now here Deborah comes on the scene. Now when Deborah comes on the scene, she, she, she calls a man by the name of Barak. Some may say Barak, but his name is Barak. When Barak comes, the Bible says she teams up with Barak and tells Barak, the Lord wants us to save the children of Israel. Oh, 
for my brothers and sisters. Uh, I often wonder, why did God continue to forgive them? Why did God continue to forgive them until I look at myself and I look at us as a people, how we sometimes would do contrary things, how we would say things we have no business and go places we have no business going and do things we have no business doing. But when God hears us cry out to him, he continues by his grace, continues to bless us. Here it is. First thing I want to show you this morning is by God's grace, he forgives. By his grace, he forgives. Look in chapter 4, verse 10, and see what happened in chapter 4, verse 10. It says, And Barak called Zechariah and Naphtali and uh, to Kadesh, and he went up with 10,000 men. Oh, Can I get some help in this house? He went up because God had forgiven the children of Israel. Right. Now God is getting ready to deliver them. Now notice here, Barak is going up with 10,000. Can I get some help? Barak is going up with 10,000 men, but you need to understand that uh, the, the king already of Canaan had 900 chariots. Now he had a mighty army. He had 900 chariots. They had no chariots. They only had 10,000 men. They were going up with chariots. They were going up against men with spears. They were going up with men with, with, with shields. They were going up with men with bow and arrows. They were going up against a mighty army. Can I tell you this morning, when God forgives you for your sins, he makes a way. He makes a way out of nowhere. I don't care how bad the enemy may look. How big the enemy may be, God makes a way. Yes. If I had a witness, I'd call David. Thank you, Lord. Can I call David for a few minutes? David was confronted with a bear. Right. David was confronted with a lion. And he was victorious over both of them. Then David was confronted with a 10 feet giant. And he was victorious over Goliath. And, and, and to add insult to injury, the man that he was protecting, Saul, is now against him also. But God protected him from Saul. And to make bad matters worse, the enemy comes in David's house, gets in his own son, Absalom. Absalom is against his father, David, and runs David out of his own palace. Somehow or another, by the grace of God, Somebody will be shouting now. By the grace of God, David was able to be victorious over every one of his battles. Because God forgives sin. David had sinned. But David cried out to the Lord, created me clean heart, and renew a right spirit within me. The Bible said God forgave David and put David back in his rightful place in the palace. God is a forgiving God. The children of Israel over and over and over and over and over and over and over again continue to turn from him and worship other gods. But God continued to bless them. God continued to forgive them. Aren't you happy this morning? Aren't you glad this morning that we serve a forgiving God? He forgives us for our sins. He cleanses us from all unrighteousness. God is such a forgiving God. But can I share this with you this morning? Not only uh, is he a forgiving God, uh, God's grace is forgiving, but also God's grace is fighting with us. God's grace is fighting with us. It is forgiving, but it is also fighting with us. Can I tell you this morning, look at verse number 16 in chapter 4. Look at verse number 16 in chapter 4. It says, Barak, but Barak, uh, Barak, brother, pursued after uh, the chariots and after the, 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 the host uh, of the horsemen uh, of, the, of the Gentiles and all the hosts of Syria fell upon the edge of the sword and there was not a man left. What am I saying? I just told you that they were going up against a mighty army. 
army. They were going up, up against the Canaanites. They had a mighty army. But here it is. God tells uh, Barak to take out 10,000 men. But Barak says to Deborah, Deborah, you want me to go, but I'll go only if you go with me. The Bible said, Deborah said, well, if you go, I'll go with you. And here both of them are going up. And no doubt, Deborah was a prophetess. No doubt, Deborah was calling on the Lord. Yeah. Deborah was calling on the Lord. Can I tell you, ain't nothing wrong with having some good praying women around you. If you got some women that know how to pray and how to get a prayer through, things will happen. Can I get some heavens out? Oh, yeah. Deborah was praying to the Lord. Deborah was calling out to the Lord. She was in the city for Barak. And while Barak was under that fighting, he and his men, the Bible said not a man escaped. Every one of them was taken. Every one of them uh, from Syria was taken by the sword. Can I tell you this morning, the God I serve this morning is able to fight your battles. Yes, he is. He'll fight your battle this morning yes. if you just keep still. Yes. I heard, I heard the Bible say that God is a battle axe. Yes. Can I get a witness? Well, he'll fight your battle. Well, let me tell you this morning how good the Lord is. Well, you may be battling this morning with cancer. You may be battling this morning with heart trouble. You may be battling this morning with trouble in your life. I want to tell you this morning, all you got to do is call out to the Lord. And God will, I say God will, he'll fight your battle if you just keep still. I say won't he do it? Somebody know that he will. Well, I tell you this morning, by the grace of God, God's grace is forgiving. God's grace will fight with you. And finally this morning, God's grace is faithful. Can I get a witness? Well, let me tell you how faithful it is. Well, I heard, yeah, I heard Deborah and Barak. Can I get a witness? Well, they all got together. And the Bible said they began after the battle to write a song. I heard Deborah as she sang praise, praise you the Lord for the vision of Israel. When the people willingly offered themselves unto the Lord. But I heard the song kept on singing. Say, hear, O oh, ye king. I, even I, will sing to the Lord. I, will sing praise to the Lord God of Israel. Yeah, can I tell you, yeah, God is, yeah, God is a forgiving God. God is a fighting God. Yes, he is. And God is a faithful God. Anybody know he is? I want to tell you here, stay with him, and he'll stay with you, yeah, stay with him, and he'll stand with you, yeah. God bless you, God bless you this morning, by God's grace, by God's grace, by God's grace. We're going to extend the invitation this morning. And it may be somebody here this morning that want to come. You may be uh, listening on your phone. You may be watching on your telephone or your computer. How are you watching this morning? How are you listening? Give your life to Christ if you have not done that already. But if you have done that and you feel as though you have slid a little bit, 
You feel as though you need to reconnect with him? When I pray this morning, I want you to reconnect with God and ask him to help you be what he wants you to be. Oh God, our Father, we come right now. We're asking that your grace will abide in our lives. We're asking Heavenly Father that you will continue to forgive us for our sins. We're asking that you will continue to walk with us and talk with us. God, we're asking right now that your mercy and your grace will not only shelter us, but shelter those who don't even know you. Bring them to their senses that they can be introduced to you. God, we're praying this special prayer in the name of Jesus. Amen. Oh, come unto Jesus. The door is open. Why?